In this video we're going to look at the non-inverting amplifier configuration for operational amplifiers and that configuration uses negative feedback from the output back into the inverting terminal of the input to control the overall voltage gain of the circuit. And for this particular circuit the overall voltage gain will be the ratio of V out to V in. And what we're going to find is it's no longer dependent on the open loop voltage gain of the op amp as long as that open loop voltage gain is really big as long and it's only going to depend on R2 and R1 values. So here's the same circuit again just shrunk down a little bit. I'm going to call this point here my V plus my inverting input and this point here my V minus my non-inverting input and you can see that the the actual input voltage is applied to the non-inverting pin and the output voltage of course is taken from the output and we have this feedback through feedback system through this R2 R1 network where the V minus the non -in, the inverting input is is taken between the R1 and the R2 values now before we start this analysis we're going to go back to some of the assumptions that we make about about these op amps and one of those assumptions that we're going to rely on here is that the amount of current that flows into the inverting terminal and into the non-inverting terminal is zero. So what that, the other way that we can look at that is that the input impedance to both of these terminals is infinite. So we want to figure out what is the actual relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage. In other words, we want to figure out what the voltage gain is. And in general, for any, op uh, for any amplifier circuit, the voltage gain is the output voltage divided by the input voltage. And in this case, this will be the closed loop gain. And what we're going to, one of the characteristics of this op amp that we're going to use, I'm going to designate the AVOL, the open loop, vo open loop voltage gain. So this doesn't stand for volume, this stands for the open loop voltage gain for this particular op amp and that differs from the closed loop voltage gain of the circuit. The closed loop voltage gain is the gain for the entire circuit whereas the open loop voltage gain is the voltage gain for this particular operational amplifier, a characteristic of the op amp. What we'll see is we want to make sure that this number is as big as possible. So when we looked at op amps what we said we started off saying that the output voltage is going to be equal to that big open loop voltage gain times the difference between the voltage at the inverting non-inverting terminal minus the voltage at the inverting terminal. Now we can see from this particular circuit that the input voltage is the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. So we can substitute that into our circuit, into our equation I should say here. So we're going to have the open loop voltage gain times V in minus the voltage at the inverting terminal. But look what that voltage at the inverting terminal is. It's based on what the output voltage is. And it's divided between these R1 and R2 values. So that V minus is actually going to be equal to V out times R1 over R1 plus R2. If you can't see that right away, let's just focus on this part of the circuit for a sec. We, the other way that we could draw that is, is here's my V out and here's my R1 and, and my R2 values and the voltage between these two points is the voltage at the inverting terminal and this is the voltage across R1. Here's the voltage across R2. So it's just the, the voltage at the inverting terminal is just the voltage divided between those two, those two resistors, and we get this equation. So what we have is V out is equal to this equation, but we've got V out in terms of V out. So let's try let's let's get everything so that we have V out is equal to something that's not in terms of V out anymore. So this is just going to involve a little bit of algebra. V out is equal to AVOL times VN minus AVOL times V out times this R1 over R1 plus R2. 
Now we can, that was just distributing a VOL amongst those two terms. Now we can move this expression over to the other side of the equation. And we get V out plus a VOL times V out times R1 over R1 plus R2 is equal to this volt, open loop voltage gain times V in. Now we can factor the V out from these two expressions and we get V out times 1 plus AVOL times R1 over R1 plus R2 is equal to that AVOL, open loop voltage gain, times V in. I'm just going to go up here since I'm running out of room a bit. And then we can take this term and move it to the other side of the equation. So we get V out is equal to the open loop voltage gain times V in divided by 1 plus the open loop voltage gain times R1 over R1 plus R2. Now I'm just going to use a little trick in, in, in algebra here to to see how we can get rid of this open loop voltage gain part of the expression. We don't actually get rid of it, but we'll see that as long as it's big, really big, we can get rid of it. So I'm going to multiply both the, nom both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over the vol open loop voltage gain. So this expression right here is just equal to 1. And when I multiply the numerator by that, I get V in on the top. And when I multiply the denominator by 1 over the open loop voltage gain, I get 1 plus, I get 1 over the open loop voltage gain plus R1 over R1 plus R2. Now actually let me take this one step further and sort of maybe a little bit of a step backwards. If I, if I move V in to the other side of the expression, V out over V in, which is my voltage gain, this is my voltage gain, my closed loop voltage gain for the entire circuit is equal to 1 over 1 over the open loop voltage gain plus R1 over R1 plus R2. Now you can see that the bigger the open loop voltage gain is for this op amp, the smaller that number is going to be. So as, as this number approaches infinity, and obviously we're not going to get up to infinity, but look, we're looking at millions perhaps, well, tens of thousands for some of the original op amps, but hopefully approaching millions or tens of millions for, for op amps that, that you're using, that number approaches zero. So what we end up with for the open, or for the closed loop voltage gain, we get the volt, the AV is going to be equal to 1 over R1 over R1 plus R2. And we do a little bit of algebra to work out that that's equal to 1 plus R2 over R1. So as long as the open loop voltage gain for this particular amplifier here is really big, the actual closed loop voltage gain, the approximate closed loop voltage gain I should say, is going to be equal to 1 plus R2 over R1. So this effect of having negative feedback, or feedback which in this case is negative feedback going back to the inverting terminal, we end up being able to control the overall voltage gain of this circuit to be equal to 1 plus the ratio of this resistor R2 to this resistor R1. Now we can actually shorten that analysis for a, an inverted, non-inverting amplifier like this if we look at, if we assume that our voltage gain, the open loop voltage gain is very big. So if you assume that this open loop voltage gain is really big, approaching infinity, then we can go by the golden rules for ideal op amps. And the golden rules for ideal op amps is if we have negative feedback, so feeding back somehow the signal from the output back into the inverting terminal of the, of the amplifier, then the op amp is going to force both the 
non-inverting terminal and the inverting terminal to have the same voltage. So with this negative feedback, the voltage at this point and the voltage at this point are going to be the same. The other golden rules for these ideal op amps, and the one that we used for the previous, in the previous example up there, is that no current will be going into this terminal and no current will be going into this terminal because the input impedances of those two are, are, are infinite. So we can redo a, a slightly simpler an, an analysis and we're going to end up with the same voltage gain. So remember we're trying to find out what the voltage gain of this circuit equal to the output voltage over the input voltage. Well, if both of these, if because of this negative feedback, this terminal and this terminal are supposed to be at the same voltage, then the voltage at the inverting terminal will also be V in. And since we have no current into this terminal, or no current going into this terminal, this output voltage will apply a voltage, will be across this, this series combination of R2 and R1. So we can say that this IR1 here it's going to be equal to this IR2 here because no, none of the current goes into this into into this terminal. So we have the IR1 is equal to IR2. And then if we use the fact that the voltage at this point is V in, then we're going to have V in over R1 is equal to IR1. The voltage across that R1 resistor will give us the current going through that resistor. So V in over R1 is going to be equal to this current here. And, and what is that current there? Well, it's the voltage difference between this point and this point divided by the resistance. So the voltage at this point is V out. The voltage at this point is V in due to the negative feedback. And that voltage is applied across R2. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra here. Multiply both sides by R2 and we get V in R2. Multiply both sides by R1, that R1 cancels, and we get V out R1 minus V in R1. Let's move this V in over to the other side of the equation, and we're going to get V in R2 plus V in R1 is equal to V out R1. And what we're looking for, of course, is V out over V in. So let's try to rework the, the equation to get to this point. Now we can factor V in out of both of those terms there. V in times R2 plus R1 is equal to V out R1. Now let's move V in to the other side of the equation and R1 to this side of the equation. And we get R2 plus R1 over R1 is equal to V out over V in. And we'll have R2 over R1 plus R1 over R1, so that's just equal to, let's write it in the same way I had it before, 1 plus R2 over R1. So this, again, is the voltage gain of the non-inverting amplifier circuit, which generically looks like this, as long as the voltage gain of our amplifier, the open loop voltage gain of our amplifier, approaches infinity, or at least is really big. Hope you learned something about non-inverting amplifier configurations with operational amplifiers, and I'll see you in the next video.